In 2008 and 2009, sports stacking was defined by the great three, Steven, Luke, and Tyler, or better known by their YouTube usernames, DB Prugs, Slim Jim, and Ty T Scrib. Their credentials include being the first three stackers to get a five in the cycle, over 40 world records, and placing top three in a world championship at some point. The Great Three really didn't face any challengers during this time, but some possible contenders included Alex Schumann, Jake Emberton, Malcolm Richardson, and Andrew Perugunen, Steven's brother. These people were expected to at least achieve the fourth five, if not taking the stacking world by storm like the Great Three did. Oh, there was also Jue Wu. Jue achieved this time on August 2, 2008, after only 8 months of stacking, which was on December 20, 2007. By the time Jue started, the Great Three were already in full swing, with Steven already being the fastest unofficial sports stacker, and the other two gaining traction as well. Steven and Luke both placed top 3 in the 2008 World Sports Stacking Championships. And by August 2009, still no one had achieved the fourth five, on tape at least. Alex Schumann had achieved one off tape, but by the end of 2009, he had quit the sport entirely. In fact, by the end of that year, all those stackers I mentioned before had faded out in some way or another. This left Jue as a frontrunner, and on August 5th, 2009... Yeah! Oh! 5.94! He said it himself best, the great four now. Out of all those stackers, Jue was the one to pull through. Let's backtrack a little. Steven achieved the 363 world records of 2.41 and 2.38 seconds in a row. He would go on to hold the 363 world record for more than two years. In that competition, he also achieved the first one for 333 in competition, 1.96. Nope, this episode isn't about that 1.96. There's another 1.96 worth talking about. One so astonishing, surprising. We'll get to that later. Whoa! Many top stackers, including Luke Myers and Malcolm Richardson, could not manage to break Steven's world records. Luke's closest time came with his second place world championship 363 finish behind Steven, who set the world record at that competition. Malcolm also had a few cracks at it in the same competition, but failed. In style. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Little juggling and flippity floppy got it, yeah. He also had a prelims attempt in an earlier competition where he beat the world record at the time. Twice in a row. But this Maryland stacker, who was featured on ESPN and said, I was fast enough to break all three world records. But he never quite got one it would be another Maryland stacker, one so unknown, with no pressure facing him, who would incredibly be the one to dethrone Steven's 363 dominance. Hennard Gardner, 10 years old, one of the greatest world records of all time, coming out of nowhere with this amazing time of 2.08. It should be noted that, if it weren't for a then illegal double down stack, he would also have the 3.33 world record of that competition at 1.68. He of course immediately received an invitation to Team USA and would go on to have a decent career with his next greatest achievement being placing second overall in the 2013 World Sports Stacking Championships, but he would never beat that 2.08. In fact, no one would. For the next year, no one got close. And even when it was beaten, 
it still wasn't close. We've reviewed this before, and we have deduced that it is not a 1.96. 208 finishes and stops the timer, 196 ran a little too slow compared to real time. Back to Jiwe. He was one of the best stackers by 2011. In fact, on March 5th, 2011, he uploaded the time that would make him the fastest unofficial stacker in the world. Yeah! Fastest stacker on the web. No, this episode isn't about that 1.96 either. We're getting there. There were a few other stackers at this time, with a one for the 363 unofficially, so the proposition of a one in tournament was certainly realistic. However, no one seemed to be trying, or no one could get a time good enough. Remember, Canard's 208 was still the world record. So now a quick word on present day efforts to achieve a one in tournament. I achieved my first unofficial one in March 2015, and I wouldn't be able to achieve that officially until April 2017. Maybe a bit above average, but it usually takes stackers around a year or two to achieve a one in competition after achieving it at home. There are outliers, of course. One infamous one, of course, is Dalton Nichols who achieved his first one unofficially on July 21st, 2013, but yet to this day he has not been able to achieve a one in competition. But there is even a more astounding, more infamous outlier on the other side of the spectrum. March 21st, 2011, the Eastern Pennsylvania Sports Stacking Tournament. It's only been two months since Jue achieved his first one for 363 unofficially. He steps up to the table for his second finals attempt in that event. You guys can probably guess what happens next. Everywhere appears looks of confusion, disbelief, happiness, but also a bittersweet tone. Jue almost effortlessly threw down the first one second 363 in tournament crushing one of the great world records by Canard a year earlier. It doesn't feel right. Has Rue pulled through? After many years of joining the likes of the Great Three, is this the peak of his dominance? Not quite. Lawrence Masterin, a well-respected veteran of the sport, who witnessed the 196, was the first to show the flaws of the record, and more specifically, the timer. It had malfunctioned by starting two tenths of a second too late, causing the attempt to appear faster than it actually was. Once people realized this, they thought that was it. The evidence seemed so clear. Jiwei's 196 would not count, and balance would be restored, with Canard's legendary 208 standing strong. Except it didn't. On April 12, 2011, the WSSA channel uploaded his 196 as a world record. It was not received well. Ratings and comments on this video have since been disabled, but me and several others will confirm that comments were bashing the WSSA's decision and ratings were very negative. Lawrence even emailed a video response to the WSSA about this decision the next day. The response was not met well by the WSSA, who, according to Lawrence, said, A lot of random crap about how it's really valid and how synchros aren't accurate and how you shouldn't go by them. In the end, the record stood, but most stackers were not accepted as the true world record, even Jiwei himself. But there were some who did accept it. Luke Myers, one of the great three from years past, argued that it's impossible to prove a malfunction using only the official footage recorded by the judges and submitted to the WSSA. Side note, he also had a statement regarding that Chandler Miller, an incredibly fast-progressing stacker at the time, who had also come out of the blue with his own world record, much like Kennard, would beat the world record. Ironically, Chandler actually did legitimately beat 208 in a tournament later that year. Many stackers then accepted this as the true world record, but the time on the official rankings page didn't change. It stood with Jue at 1.96. Today, Jue has enjoyed a very successful career. In addition to his 1.96, he has achieved several relay world records, including the current standing one. Although his tournament career is just about over, 
He is still active in the community after all these years and is now the global records manager at the WSSA, which means if you get a record, it has to go through him for verification. He has also been no stranger to controversy after his 1.96 either. As a reviewer, he scratched a potential Relay World Record in 2017. There were questions on whether the current world record holder in the event should have a say in the decision, and whether the scratch was even justified. But all that said, the 196 is a story in sports stacking history that will never be forgotten. You may argue all you want about how the attempt should never have counted, but I personally see it as Jouet's greatest success. It was the culmination of persistence that let Jouet achieve the record, and fate had it in it for him to do it. The circumstances for this to happen may never be seen again. Back in 2009, when Jouet declared himself as one of the greats, it wasn't just his pure speed, but also his raw will to strive to be one of the greats. When others faded away, he broke through. While others tried to force their own opportunities, he let the opportunity come to him. And that's what led to the time of 1.96.